Big V is going to miss the first four games of the season. This is a big hit for the Lions. It might not seem like a lot, but that is a quarter of the season. Sucks losing Big V. This Philadelphia Eagles defensive line is one of the toughest tests they're dealing with. You had Cox going against Big V. You know, maybe you're feeling pretty good about that. Maybe you're feeling good against that Cox V matchup. It starts with the thick boys in the middle. The heavies. It, it's tough, man. I just want to see these guys out there as a unit, as the people movers. This is a unit, and if they were healthy and together, they could be elite. You need Big V to keep Cox off of Jared Goff's ass. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is, man. What's not popping is the Lions already suffered an injury on that offensive line. Halapalua Vitae okay. is going to miss the first four games of the season. Big V is going to miss the first four games of the season as he was put on the IR. The Lions did sign Drew Forbes off of the waiver list of former Cleveland Brown to bring in and get some backup, maybe maybe get some, you know, some assurance in case they deal with anything else. But as we know, to replace him, you're looking at Sternberg, maybe Evan Brown. Maybe you move some guys around. Maybe Tom, Tommy Kramer is the uh, Tommy Kramer yeah. is the favorite to get that spot. But this is a big hit for the Lions because we've talked about this. We've talked about how the offensive line can be dominant, how this can be one of the best forces in the NFL in that position group. But they just couldn't stay healthy. Last year, obviously, you had Ragnow miss the whole season. You had Taylor Decker miss some games here and there, and already before they have played a snap in the regular season, one of those five pieces up front is going to miss four games, which it doesn't, it might not seem like a lot, but that is a quarter of the season. So, so easy. what does this mean to this Lions team, and how much will it affect them week one against Philadelphia Eagles <coughs> and John Davis and Fletcher Cox? And those big boys up the middle. Cox in the middle. Cox. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it sucks, bro. It's, it's, not, it's not good news, especially Bobby on Cox the coming sucks, week. Bro. We have Cox in the middle. <laughs> and no, but honestly, God, they're like, the week we face probably the biggest defensive line we're going to see all season. The mammoth of a human being in Jordan Davis. Yes. Obviously, Fletcher Cox has been doing he's doing his whole career. Brandon Graham, is, as well as that, like, it's not good news, man. And, and, I, and I've been a fan of Logan Steinberg more so than Tommy Kramer. Specifically, but that's in a backup role. You yes. know what I'm saying? And like, even it took him a week, you know what I'm saying, to get going. Because the first week, that offensive line, the backup offensive line, did not look good against that Falcons backup defense. And the Falcons defense, not one to be praised, you know what I'm saying? They definitely look better against the Colts and then falling, you know, Pittsburgh after that. But it is what it is, man. I think Dan Campbell spoke on the uh, the radio station this morning. I forgot, I apologize the name if I forgot the name of the show, but. He said we're used to this, though. Stoney and Jansen. Stoney and Jansen, shout out. But uh, they're used to this. I'm saying it's nothing new to them. They used to deal with these things. They had it last year. If there's any team more prepared for adversity, it's them. And he's 100% right. They dealt with that last year. They dealt with it losing a bigger piece in Frank Rag now. It does suck losing a Lodi. I can't even do the name. I used to call it. Of Big V. It sucks losing Big V. But offensive line as a unit, I think, will still be solid, especially running the football. I think, again, I'm more confident in Logan Steinberg, but. I believe Tommy Kramer's going to start, at least what it says on the depth chart as of now. Uh, shot they forgot releasing that on Twitter. But they could run the ball. I'm more concerned in pass protection, again, against this Eagles front, specifically Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox. Like, those aren't – those are mammoths of human beings, man. Yeah, it is. It is It is tough. Like we said, this, this Philadelphia Eagles defensive line is one of the toughest tests they're dealing with. And it, it is week one. And it is without Big V. And if you had Cox going against Big V, you know, maybe you're feeling pretty good about that. Maybe you're feeling good against that Cox V matchup. <laughs> but now you've got a backup in there. <laughs> and on top of Cox, you've got Jordan Davis, who, like you said, a mammoth of a man, a freak of nature. You're going to need all hands on deck dealing with Cox and Jordan Davis. And now you're down one of your best guys on the inside. So it hurts a lot. But... What hurts me the most is that we still, still will not see this offensive line all together in a game. Yeah. This is going to be week 18 that this offensive line has been put together. And we still will have yet to see them all on the field once. And that, that is what pisses me off. Obviously, you know, we hope Big V is healthy. I'm not blaming him or anything like that because injuries happen. But, man, 
This is a unit, and if they were healthy and together, they could be elite. But we'll never know. Yeah. Because we are going to go 21 weeks of NFL season, at the very least, without seeing them all together on the same offensive line. Like you said, it doesn't help that they're going against the Philadelphia Eagles, who have great trench work. It doesn't help that the Eagles know that. Big V is going to be gone, and they're going to have a backup in there. So yeah. they're going to have Fletcher Cox on him, and not Jordan Davis, because Fletcher Cox is a wily veteran. So he's yes. going to he's going to put some moves. He's going to know what he needs to do on whether it's Tommy Kramer or Steinberg or any of those guys. But it's not going to be good. We need these guys to get healthy. This offensive line is the biggest key to the team's success. Whether it is creating holes for Williams and Swift and Craig to run through Craig. or is keeping Jared Goff off of his ass, allowing Jared Goff the freedom to go through his reads and get the ball to all of these weapons that Lions fans are so enamored with that we have on the offense this year. It starts with the thick boys in the middle. Heavies. And the easiest way to get from place A to place B is a straight line. The easiest way to get to a quarterback is right up the middle. And not having a piece like Big V, who wasn't great by any means, but the dude is better than the backups we have, that's a hit. That's something that's going to be in the back of Jared Goff's mind. That's something that's going to be in back of the offense's mind. People might be overplaying. And it, it it's tough, man. I just, I just want to see this, these guys healthy. I just want to see these guys out there as a unit, as the people movers, going out there and pushing these guys around. If you have this full offensive line, you're even looking at Fletcher Cox and Jordan Davis and Brandon Graham, and you're like, all right, I, we can handle these guys. Yeah. We can handle them. But now, even with one chink in the armor, just like a what chain. What do have to do with this, man? It all, Jesus, dude. It only takes... One rusty link to break a chain. And it's just like the offensive line. All it takes is one guy to give up a pressure, and that ruins the play. And not having your starter in there is bad news, especially for the first four weeks of the season. Because after these first four games, schedule gets real tough for about four or five games. So we needed them to be healthy and get the season off to a hot start. But so far, not so good. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not tripping so much in the, the run game. It's more so pass protection. And again, like you said, like Cox a wily vet. You need Big V to keep Cox off of Jared Goff's ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it. It is what it is, man. <laughs> but I, I'm more concerned with the pass protection aspect of it. But again, last year, this offensive line faced injuries from left tackle. Yes. Uh, to our, our center, who was like a Pro Bowl level elite. I think the highest paid in the game, or second highest paid in the game at this point. Like obviously Frank Ragdoll missing him last year sucked a lot too, but they still were able to overcome that and rank 13th in the league overall when all was said and done. Now this is just one piece. I don't want to discount Big V as a player or as a piece of this office of this offensive line, but I would say, in terms of accolades go, he's probably the the weakest link of it you yes, saying so i would agree so there's that aspect maybe the gap between you know a tommy kramer and big v isn't that big but i just i mean the dude's named big v for a reason it's a big body dude like mm-hmm. you he probably was a big part of you know running the, the football and I, I probably have to go back do a little bit more homework and see where the immigrant is just preseason but like who they like to run behind I, I did go back and watch the homework on steinberg was a guy i thought was going to take the starting spot but looks like tommy kramer so i gotta re-redo my homework and watch how he performed because even the colts game where they got most of the run they were running the damn ball non-stop and that's what i'm saying i'm not concerned the run game it's more so the passing game and like you said man like Cox is a Super Bowl champion. Brandon Graham, too. Brandon Graham, you can see, catch the side as well. Oh, yeah. That's another dangerous human being to have in there, man. But it is what it is, man. I, I shook, what, one, two, three, five, quite, quite a few hands in a five-dollar best. The Detroit Lions would beat the Philadelphia Eagles week one at home at Ford Field. I'm closing the <laughs> gates are closing that yeah. way. I'm, I'm done shaking hands for that one, yo. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm officially concerned. I was already on alert last week when they picked up CJ, DJ, or GJ, CJ, however the hell you say it. But now, with the big V injury, it sucks a little bit more. But I, I'm not tripping along. And again, we were missing quite a few pieces last year and still ranked within the top 15 of the league. So, we should be straight missing the, the one the JV's one got that check ready to collect. <laughs> ready to collect. I, I can't throw my five in there for one, one last time. You're not taking no well. Oh, you yeah. Oh, man. You got you, one more? You were on my side last week. <laughs> What's hey, going man. on? That's, I don't think this is going to be the 
you know, solidifying fact. I, I'm not. I wouldn't go out there and be like, "Oh, the Lions are going to lose this game because they don't have Big V in there." I'm not saying that. I think the Lions are going to lose this game anyways. I think the Eagles are going to run up a check on us, but it definitely doesn't help because offensive line is a lot about cohesion. It is a lot about working off of each other, and when you haven't had the reps with your starting five in a single game, that doesn't bode well. Yeah. It doesn't bode well for the rest of the season, so we'll have to see it. Hopefully, Big V comes right back after that fourth game. I'll take them cover. And I'll take Lions cover. What's the cover that plus? What's the spread? Uh, plus four. I'll take that bet too. Yeah, they'll cover. You want to double down? No, I'm, I mean I, I'll say. You said they're not going to cover the, not, the four. The Eagles will cover. All right, I'll they're going to win by that. ten. All right.